What's up, ladies and gentlemen? We are here in the lab, dating 24-7, now sports podcast, powered by Ladybug Services. Uh, if you have any problems, call 263-BUG. Shout out to Ladybug Services. Now, we have an epic show today in our episode number seven, and I have my two uh, co-hosts, uh, Mr. Smith. How we feeling today? Life is good. All right. Um, and today, we have a couple special guests. Now, this lady, she's the she's running for the mayor of Dayton, but first, she's got she's going to go ahead and uh, no, elevate Mims. the UD program. <laughs> yeah. We got Tamika Williams, Jeter in the What's building. Up? How y'all doing? How we feeling? Uh, hey, I'm in Dayton. I'm feeling good. Good, good, good. And uh, you're in a good position. We're going to be talking to her here in a second about uh, the UD Flyers, but we have a lot to talk about uh, with our hot five uh, topics. We have the NBA, uh, mm-hmm. which is going crazy. First round playoffs, a whole bunch of matchups. Can the Lakers get through? Will Phoenix get through? Or will it be the young boys? And then WNBA, we just had the draft. Yeah. And we know that means a lot to you. Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll talk about the winners or losers. And uh, also, how does women, how does a uh, WNBA get to the level of college basketball right now Ooh. because college basketball is Boom. going crazy with NIL yeah. and all of that stuff. Um, and then we have uh, another special guest coming in uh, coming today. Mr. Pina Johnson is going to talk about the big book signing and uh, the big day today and what he has in store. Then we're going to hit the baseball circuit, Wright State UD. Uh, we got our youth teams of the week and then our hot five topics to go. A lot of stuff to talk about. Okay, Mr. Smith. Now you you have this lady next to you. Um, honored, honored. Yeah, yeah, you know you yeah. probably work with her at some point. Um, you know, you know what's it? How was your weekend? First of all, oh, it was a great weekend. Every every day is a great day when you're alive. So Amen. I don't know what it feels like to be on the other side, but I truly enjoy this side. Amen. So yeah, you got a chance to um, you know check Tamika out in high school. Yeah, um, oh, just a dominant player. How does mm-hmm. it feel for you to see her now coaching UD? I mean, this is you know, it's, it's kind of crazy, full circle for her a little bit. Well, when you you from Dayton and then you see uh, um, her start and then where she's at now, you you know you can't be nothing but happy. She's a, a, a native Daytonian, so just to watch her from CJ to UConn to she was in Texas. I remember when you were in Texas, <laughs> and to be back uh, uh, Wittenberg, yeah, and down now to turn uh, on her way to turning the UD program around. So it's it's a blessing, it's an honor for me uh, to be able to be associated with someone like her and to see her out and give her some love and and her acknowledge uh, uh, that love. So yes. always, <laughs> what's it yeah. been like? for you to make a, you know in the first season as far as with the community and how have they you know how oh, they've been man. to you you know um it's something you dream about when you have the support you have coming from a place and always venturing back to a place and now reestablishing yourself in that space is um taking a job is one thing but the impact on the community is um immeasurable uh, the amount of times we, you know, I've never taken as much, this many hits in a season in my life, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, but I knew coming in, they were very honest about where the program was going to be sitting. Um, but to walk around a city, and I, I, I was talking to my assistant coach about it today. I was like, a city full of chin lifters. Like, I walk to my office, AG, first person I see is the men's basketball team, and I'm like in my space because this is this is not this is uncomfortable for me, right? To to be in, it's a space I've never had to be in for long. Um, and I'm like, man, you know. And he's always chin lift. You know, I go to Kroger, chin lift up. You know, I go to a rec center, chin lift up. I go visit some one of my friends that I grew up with, chin lift up. Everybody's like, it's almost there. Fans after the game, me, you gonna get it done? Like you that close with this team that never play? You know, under, so to I don't know if you get that if you go anywhere else, except home. And uh, you know, like you said, you have been a winner all of your life. Oof. I mean, talking about somebody who's won on the highest level with the Sioux Birds and all of these greats, you have been, you have, you are at that level. So for you, how was it this season just to take you know, the L's? Blows. Not just the L's on the court, but yes. you know, like the, you know, how was it mentally on you? It didn't really bother me. The losing bothers me. Um, you know, people are like, ah, oh, you think you like, I knew coming in, um, I think the administrative administration did a great job to say, you're going to lose. You're, you're going to have 
um, a couple people stay. You know, transfer portal portal is real, um, and you're going to have a lot of inexperience. So the kids I have returning, I might have people who graduate next month who played their first year of basketball. I only have one kid, not another half a year kid who had even played college basketball before the season, and of course we were injured. So when you really look back at you know, from a, I kind of stepped back from the beginning of the season was rough and we played a high net slash RPI. Our non-conference was like that. Right. Played three, four SEC teams. So now getting to um, the end of the season, we start to win games with a short roster. It, you have some promising spaces and we got a really good recruiting class coming in. So I pushed the kids who were in front of me as hard as I possibly could. I know they got better and none of them left. So I know they had a great experience being young women. That's why I do it. And um, they saw it pay off at the end of the season. So now we're just, that's what I had to hang my hat on. Every day is just getting better every day. It's not about the end. It's about every day and just maximizing that day. The 1%. The 1%. Percent. And we talked about that get one percent you got you got something you know what uh my question is i know outside the losing because you came from a winning environment everywhere mm-hmm. you stop uh outside the losing what more i mean what what can you tell me more that was uh the hardest part uh um you know outside the losing I was, um i would say the hard <laughs> this is funny y'all gonna laugh at it Uh-oh. the hardest part is being back here because you oh, got to think man. where people stopped yeah, is yeah. in 1998 when I graduated. Now yeah. they've watched. So I've never been in a space where I, I've been away for so long that when I walk around, people go, oh, you play basketball or you play volleyball. You know, when I'm mm-hmm. you play volleyball. Oh, yeah, yeah. You didn't have to answer nothing. Else. Now coming back here, I got, you know, 50 year old people at Kroger. You know, I got some sweatpants on it. Oh, that's good. They can come here. They kid don't know who I am. You know what she, you know, so mm-hmm. that was probably one of the hardest parts is that I couldn't maneuver and just be me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was very big on that in that space. That was a hard part. Number two was just knowing that you can't cheat experience. Right. With my players. Yeah. You have to go through things in life. You have to go through things on the court and you can't remanufacture that space until you go through it. You don't know what you don't know until you go through it. Right. Uh, where are you at? Uh, go ahead. Where are you at as far as your recruiting now? We good. We good. We got a great class coming in. Got okay. great. Picked up a great kid in the transfer portal. I'm not. I'm not heavy on the transfer portal, but um, we we look really good as far as promising. Yeah, because everybody want to know now. Everybody, wa- hey, They're I like, want to hey, know. Uh, what, uh, what's going on? What's going on, Nate? Yeah. She loses it. Heard yeah. 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 Um, we got a lot more to talk about here when we come back. Uh, Dayton 24 seven now sports podcast. All right, welcome back. Dayton 24-7 Now Sports Podcast, powered by Ladybug Services. Shout out to Miss Regina Johnson and Ladybug Services. 263-BUG if you're having any issues in that area, all right? We have the legend, Miss Tamika Williams-Jeter in the building. And we are talking a couple of key issues here is recruiting and the transfer portal and the NIL and all of this has made college much more enticing and... What a year for women's college basketball. I mean, it was incredible. Hey, I mean, it's especially great. at the end, yeah. Final Four, you can have had all the teams you wanted in there. Yep. I mean, you had the, you know, the whole dynamic of you got the team from up north in Iowa and yep. you got the fancy LSU squad. Yep. Um, real quick, uh, what do you think about the season? And Oof. I thought it was a great season. Was y'all better than was it better than college the men's? Yeah, come on, you already know. I mean, I can't say <laughs> You know, UConn won, that's so I'm excited. Question. Yeah, I'm that's excited. another thing, too. I mean, but on the women's side, y'all hey, love me. You, you know, you coached at Ohio State. Yeah. What was it like watching Ohio State UConn game? It was great. And it was funny going into it because I had talked to uh, Cody McMahon's mom the night before, and she was all worried. They're kind of, I'm like, look, you know, I was like, they sorry. Like, they not that good. Uh, 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 you know, just, I just tell them, like, y'all can win this game. Yeah. You know, they're not the Connecticut of the past, and they're injured. They're pretty beat up, and they're down and to just to see them you know slice them up and a lot of those players um 
either recruited or and or coached most of them because with this fifth year they stay forever, right? And one of them was playing for Ohio State and went to UConn yes. the center. Yes. And she got drafted too. Yes. Yep. Yeah, Dorka. Yep. So it was a lot of people in that game um, that, um, of course, being from Ohio and, and, and coaching at Ohio State a couple years ago. So I loved it. I thought it was competitive. I liked the Final Four because it was different teams outside of South Carolina. You know, they're a regular, so you have some new teams. And not everybody got to see. Do you see Kaitlyn Clark on highlights? I had been on the other end of that in the Big Ten where you're trying to stop her and she whispering in their ear. Oh. You know, she, yeah. you know, she oh. throwing the Iowa jersey. She's jumped on stuff. You know, that kid plays so big time, but it was so much fun to see on this scale. Angel Reese is another one. When she was at Maryland, I've been on the end of that stick. Yeah. Them, those are highly competitive, highly emotional players, right? And when they were young, you used to get in their head. So it's kind of interesting to see them grow to a space where they could hold it off for so long, um, but both very highly critiqued for the most part because uh, they play with so much passion. Mr. Ray, you got something? <laughs> I want to know. Uh, uh, oh, God. <laughs> this was funny. I forgot, I'm sorry, that you were at Ohio State because she was rec recruiting Cody. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you got the job, did you ever say, ah, let me call Stacy? <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> so I think she always had an offer about the time I got here. Yeah, I uh, think she made her decision a year. Yeah, she got there. yeah. But uh, I know you had uh, um, when she was younger, and yeah. you first got to Ohio State. I forgot Ohio State, mm -hmm. and you had a, you had to stop at Ohio State. So mm -hmm. congratulations. But one of, one of the questions: Have you reached out to Gino? Yeah. Oh yeah, all season. Oh okay. Oh trust all me. Right. I was good because when my when my players start getting sick and hurt and falling, my team start my numbers were down. I played majority right. of the season with seven or six players. And one yeah. was a walk on. So we were close in games. I mean, Ole Miss beat Stanford. We were tied with Ole Miss in Bahamas with seven players with three minutes left in the game. Mm -hmm. So we were so close. So now I almost wish we were losing. But I was telling my team, maybe we should have just lost by 25, 30, how everybody is. Because to play so close, it even it hurt even more. But I would call him like, man, coach, we were tied with three minutes left against Ole Miss. This is the team that ended up upsetting Stanford at Stanford. Number right. Yeah. And I'm like, man. And then we played Kentucky. And Steve O'Hannon had gotten hurt at that time. So mm -hmm. we going in that game with six. Right. Right. I knew she was going to press this whole game. So anyway, I'm going through the season with him. Uh, you, you tough it out. You'll figure it out. If you don't figure it out this year, you're the kid that's going to always figure it out. You'll figure it out. Next. You know, he was real like, uh, we all had to take our bunch of roots. Boy, when them, that his bench got short and I called him. It was a different story. I was, I was, I was, I was, like, you know, he cussing me out. I'm like, oh. what's all that energy? You, you, you figured it out for 30 some years. You know, like, what? I would get on him. And then he said, he hasn't sat at the end of the bench. I think they were playing Marquette and he came out in the second half and sat at the end of the bench. He hasn't done that since my freshman year. So right. you gotta understand, as much as I was uncomfortable this year, I'm looking like this is a guy that's been doing it for almost 40 years and has never had to, hasn't done that since 1999. Mm. So he, think about how uncomfortable he is. He has some emojis in that game that oh, are legendary. Oh, he, he play was, like, was so know, was upset really against good. Ohio. Yeah. Oh, was, yeah. That really, and then Paige over there, her, I mean, you could just see the fire in her eyes. Oh, yeah. That's why next year is going to be incredible. Mm -hmm. But let's get back to your team. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how are we looking for season two? And, uh, you know, what's the outlook for Looks you Looks good. We have... Um, a couple of players coming in, one from Coldwater, Riley Rissmiller, 6'4", yeah. post player. Um, okay. With her, it was down to Virginia Tech, who was also in the Final Four, Indiana, Cold. Michigan, Marquette. So a big, big get for us late, considering when we got the job. Um, another one, E. Fiala, who's out of uh, Indiana, Pennsylvania, 6'5", kid, um, had every Power Five offer. Um, oh, wow. And half the ACC, half the SEC fell into some hard times from a family situation, and people forget. So the one thing about the the transfer portal is these P5s are going straight to the portal. Yeah. You know, they will take someone, so they forget some of these kids. So we, we snuck her. And then we got Lauren Pallott, another kid, was a two-sport kid, had a scholarship to go to Ohio State to play um, field, uh, sorry, lacrosse or to play basketball. So in the summer, she played on a more lower-level AAU program. Mm -hmm. Killer. Um, and then we got a kid from the Bahamas who was the youngest kid on the team, but was a leading scorer, rebounder, everything, big, uh, really um, athletic guard out of Bahamas, and she's in a boarding school. And then we just got someone in the in a portal. So we didn't have much size. We were undersized, but we was going to kick your butt the whole game. You what know? about the Riley Saglisher? I know you heard about her. Yeah. Did you did you ever think about couldn't get her in there? No, I didn't. Okay. Didn't. Um, <laughs> right, right. I mean, There's no interest. Play. Yeah, yeah, got you. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, like, I'm sure a lot of people will be happy and relieved mm -hmm. because you have been quiet for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but 
Um, how's it? I know you feel a little bit more confident going into season oh, one. Oh, absolutely. Um, I wasn't quiet. It's just that Dion Cash never called me. Oh. I just want everybody to understand. <laughs> There's only one person that could get in the the real interview. You know, everybody else in the city when we do well, so they're gonna ask me leading questions of success. I needed to get on a show that's gonna ask me like, how was it this year? You know, what punches you did? What did you learn about yourself? You know, you from Dayton. We expect the expectation is high. You know, people say my team. I'm like, yeah, we suck. We losing. You know, I needed somebody that's gonna come real. I'm on the show, so we understand what hiding. I just was here. I did other interviews, but they nice interviews. So y'all probably went interview. <laughs> now I'm doing an interview. They asked me real you quick. I just had to get that out before we had to go to break. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm here. Well, I arrived. But, but you know, I'm we love you, so we don't want to. We don't want to. No, I'm know, somebody after this. They can't tell me nothing. Uh, when I walk into the city now. I done made the Cash uh, SE live show. Boom. Uh, <laughs> There goes the dynamite. <laughs> we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't went to school together, so <laughs> love her and her family. Um, but we just wanted to keep it quiet this season because we know it wasn't uh, your type of season. We know you're a big time yes. winner, and we wanted to make sure that we talked to you in a good space. Well, next time, next year, y'all better do Get something. Because well, yeah. we're right going to be loss, on come you. For me. But uh, it's been always love. We love to have you here. Um, anything you want to say real quick uh, to the UD Nation or to your fans or anybody? It's everything. I mean, that's why I have hope for next year we have really good kids coming in we got kids coming back who have a year of experience for me that's everything that's what i couldn't cheat is the process and so i'm excited i'm excited to bring bring winning back to the city at that level because i know you know for me i do have the whole city behind me yeah. legendary and we love you oh uh, yeah and wait i made it no get it oh. take a picture of this handshake everybody uh. yes i made it <laughs> she's crazy Brittany, don't be putting up the piece hey, yeah. I made it. Hey, good, man. Um, hey, good job dog. when we come back we're gonna bring on mr peanut johnson and we'll talk nba baseball hot five dayton 24 7 now sports podcast powered by ladybug services lock in with us All right, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? We're back here, Dayton 24-7 Now Sports Podcast. Beautiful day outside, and uh, we got some big stuff going down uh, today. Now, this guy that I have coming on, he is a... um He's just excellent at whatever he does, but he's really a marketing king, and he's also great on on he he's great on the camera as well. He used to be great behind the scenes, but now he's really elevated his uh, his hosting game. And uh, we already got the CEO of Dash Resources in the building. We got Peanut Johnson. Thank you. Man. What's up, my man? Thank you, my man. Hey, listen, man, listen. This is the funniest joke ever, man. Shout out to my mom. He looks just identical to my older brother. I always want to say that. <laughs> it can't, damn. I, it looks just like my older brother, I swear. And they both left-handed today. Blew my mind, bro. Blew um, my mind. How you feeling? Exceptionally well, man. All right. Exceptionally uh, well. Now, Mr. Smith, we didn't have him on before. Yeah, um, that's, the, that's the that's the urban legend right there. <laughs> don't, 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 don't say his name three times. <laughs> I'm going to pop you away. Pop away. <laughs> you might get <laughs> he'll, <laughs> he'll pop up. But, yeah, he's been doing this. You know, I love to see his I, I mean, I love your energy. And Thanks, you've been man. doing this a little while. So, uh, and, and I'm glad. Glad to see everything is popping off for you. So I received that. Now you got two different things here we're working with. Dash Resources. Talk about that real quickly and what yeah. you do with that. So here with my pitch, Dash Resource LLC, where your business is my business. Literally, um, I help people get their business from EIN number all the way to um, business funding. Um, it, it, it really started when you know, like on the financial sector of it was during the pandemic. I see, I see a lot of people that was wasting their ill-gotten gains. I'm not gonna say what it was because we all <laughs> on the internet, right? Well, but 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 during the pandemic, I seen people. People wasting their money, um, just blowing it on BS, man. And then I just took it upon myself to not just sit back and laugh at them, to actually help them and educate. At that time, I was already trading for five years uh, stocks, by the way. And then I, I took that time to educate from the corner of my apartment. Now I see you be, you know, you be doing stuff with sports. You be mm -hmm. oh, putting yeah. people on the sports, yeah. like stocks and stuff like that too. What's, you know, how do you get into that, man? How so, do you get into this? So, um, I mean, I learned from my grandmother, man, uh, Andy Bonaparte, man. Like she was the master at. Um, teaching you while also it had to be something like you was engaged with, right? So, um, like the sports stocks really got to a point where it was, it was during the football season. So, I just wanted to teach people, like, hey, you like this football team? Let's look at who supports your football team. Let's look into those stocks because then, like I said before, you get a chance to learn through, through something you love. And I think that's something that a lot of people can connect with because a lot of times, like, the greatest teachers are going to find something that you love and then bring that out in you. Speaking of love, um, <laughs> that's a good segue there. We have 
something that the city should love mm -hmm. uh, tonight. Uh, Schuster Center, Ahava Elion. Um, his book, Stolen, will be uh, he'll be doing a podcast tonight, if I'm correct. Yes. Go ahead and tell us what's going on. So that was as a great segue because Ahava means love, man. <laughs> oh, my God, bro. You, you're amazing. <laughs> I think Ahava means like Ahava Elion means love for God. But um, he, he changed his name based off of him, him growing up and finding out that like his, his, his father that he thought was his father like coerced and finessed in order to steal him and think that nurture and when he um, couldn't have that control anymore he ended up killing his mom so that's not what tonight is about we're actually um, it's the book signing but we're also doing the live podcast for the legendary people podcast the legendary people podcast I know I talk fast and we're literally going to do what we normally do on our podcast but we're going to have it with a live audience for the very first time so the whole community is going to be out there we've already pre-sold maybe 700 tickets for the first show the second show is almost sold out but you know we had to make room for big people like Tamika to come through. So I had to, and Grace had to get her two more VIP tickets to make sure she is fully a, a, like a, accommodated tonight. Oh, that's so, hey, that's what's up, Tamika. Hey, legend. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Get sure. fancy over to Tamika. Now, sports. Mm -hmm. You you was Hooper? Yeah, I'm Where'd you sure. go? Where'd you go? So I played for Meadowdale, man. Oh, look, I think Lions yes, over here. Yes, oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, I like Meadowdale, yes. man. But, uh, I grew up city in, guys. but I grew up in the era where my coach, shout out to, uh, uh, not shout out to that coach, man. <laughs> he didn't like scoring point guards, man. Listen, he thought a point guard should just pass the ball, and I understand that. But I grew up in the Iverson era, man. I wanted to get buckets, so when I play AAU in the Roosevelt circuit, I got, I got a chance to get off. And there, <laughs> man. No. man <laughs> not the Roosevelt circuit. No. I was yeah. playing it next to the coach. <laughs> I was going to tell the coach what should happen next. <laughs> hey, who was the OG over there at Roosevelt <laughs> running gym? Uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. Fletch. Fletch, Fletch and Powell. Yeah. Fletch Shout out to Powell. Fletch. Yeah. Fletch yeah. gave everybody hey, your place. So, but yeah. Then, and I'm going to tell you, that's true. He gave a lot of people a chance yeah. to display their game. So, sure. you was one of them. <laughs> yeah. But then it took you to somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Terry Wright. Uh, yes. God uh, rest his soul. Terry. Second, second Terry Kevels in the gym, didn't he? So, yeah. so I want to say this about, like, those coaches. Like, for instance, I'm saying, like, shout out to um, – Coach Tamika is like a lot of times now, like we grew up in an era now where social media dominates our younger generation, right? Yeah. When we grew up before the internet, and I know people are like, wait, how old are you? Fast forward. So what I'm saying is we grew up to a point where we got our confidence in something we love, such as like basketball will be something where I literally got a chance to be the best person on my block. I got a chance to be the best player on my team. Those are the things where if I got my phone and saw someone dunk from the free throw line that's two years younger than me, I'm not gonna feel the same type of way. That's the other confidence that built me to the person I am today. So a lot of times in the culture, you have way more of a bigger responsibility when you're nurturing these kids along to let them get a little bit of burn. Let them play through these games where you already getting blew out. Let that player get some time. What do you think? Yeah, and you're absolutely right, but it, not, not only it teaches you, uh, it gives you camaraderie with other players and how to relate to other players, though. but it teaches you discipline, mm -hmm. going to practice, being able to work on your game. So that's something you took and used in your business now, being disciplined. If you're doing stuff Stocks. You have to be patient. You have Absolutely. to be disciplined. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, that's good stuff, man. I, but, you know, I saw you hooping once. If I, man, I, you didn't hit a bucket. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> was it like, was cold that night. Is that, is that, is that Peter? <laughs> How uh, was the over 12? Yeah, he was over 12. Uh, I see why your coach wanted you to pass the ball. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he, he knew something you hadn't figured out yet. <laughs> no, no I'm just kidding. That's why I got <laughs> Real quick. Quickly, did you watch the college basketball and women's? Which one was more exciting than you? I know you watched them both. Definitely the female basketball, man. Uh, and then listen, man, like, uh, I'm going to shoot my sister some bail, man. Like, everybody giving her all this drama over that. I mean, and it, like, for instance, I grew up in an era where I seen Allen Iverson step over Teron Lue after he hit that shot, and it was respected. How come female can't get that same respect because they're big enough? And not to mention, it was something that girl was already doing. I think it was a race issue, um, to be for real. Mm. It was more of a... Caitlin Clark did it, but people didn't think that she was that type of player, but she was a killer. We said that before. I mean, she, they was beating Ohio State by like 30, 20, 30 in the championship, and she's going crazy and just her attitude. And I think they kind of like, you know, bad girl on one side, good girl on one side. And I think that just kept going and kept going. Um, but no question that the women's basketball was better than the men's oh, this year. way more entertaining. Uh, we're going to be back here in a little bit with Peanut. We got high five topics. We got baseball. We got Tamika Williams Jeter. Day 24-7 now, sports podcast going down, man.
All right, welcome back here to Day 24-7 Now Sports Podcast, powered by Ladybug Services. 263 Bug, if you need that service. Uh, special thanks to Ladybug Services once again. Now, Mr. Peanut Johnson in the building. Yes, sir. Uh, with Mr. Smith. And you know we got to get to our hot five topics, Mr. Got to. You already know. We do that every time. Uh, so let's get to it. All right, Wright State, Dayton played yesterday in baseball. All right, now, why is it a big deal? Because Wright State had won 17 out of the last... 18 meetings that they played, but UD got some get back at Dayer Field, eight to three win. And uh, with that, UD improves. Um, I know y'all not really into, are y'all into baseball? Let's talk about baseball, baseball just real guy. quickly. Um, Wright State, they're probably going to, they have a good chance to make the tournament again. Yeah. Uh, but this is a big win for UD. When you lose 17 out of 18, you got to get something, right? Yeah, that's that's the uh, cross, cross town ri- rivalry. Uh-huh. So, um, that, but that's big, though, for Wright State. State. For sure. Why don't why don't do it in basketball? You think are they are you going? I think it comes down to like recruitment. I mean, like a lot of times, I mean, like if you have a chance to play at a hometown team over a team you actually want to go to, I think that's going to be the difference between you getting the premier player or not. And to me, I mean, like to see UD get that win, it just basically. I mean, like we all seen where, where like the Lakers will play a team that had a, 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 a injured player, and then he comes back miraculously to play them. So like that hometown rivalry is going to cook up something that normally it wouldn't happen. So get them, I, it'll definitely get us some rec- recruits for sure because Wright State been dominant. Um, they've been dominant over the last for well for a while. I mean, they've had a really. Uh, upper echelon yeah. program. They've been in a tournament all the time. A Dayton has been guys went to the pros, so. NBL, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, Brian Anderson back in the day, he went, he's a pitcher, uh, got to the league. But a uh, big win uh, for Dayton on uh, on the season uh, as they take out Wright State at Day Airfield. Now, um, the Reds, right oh. now they're seven and they're seven and the nine. Yeah. Um, they, they just beat. Uh, they they wiped out the Phillies on Jackie Robinson. They day. got crushed yeah. yesterday. Yeah, they were. No, they did. They, they wiped out the Phillies, then they wiped out Tampa in the first game. But then, like you said, they got crushed. I'm still not recovering from that first loss. Like, I mean, I mean, like that was like heartbreak. Three to two. I think. Oh my three to god, two. man! Yeah. You watch baseball to me? Cause you going to any baseball games or what? No, I almost went to our game yesterday because they sold out. They had they had a new space. Um, new field, so it's beautiful. They had like 6, 6,100 fans there yesterday. That's nice. Wow. That's big. They just put a new thing. I think they had a sinkhole issue, but it's if you go look at the pictures, it's beautiful. Yeah, it was packed house, packed house. Big win for y'all. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not a baseball fan. Not a baseball fan. <laughs> if you're going, if you're gonna go to a Reds game or Dragons game, if you're going. Um, mm. I, I love the whole ambiance with uh, uh, the dragons. <laughs> yeah. And now if you go down there now, you got people sitting up on the, the apartment building yeah. and everything. But with the Reds, see, I wait till the Reds start losing. Then I go buy like the $8 seats, uh, nosebleed, <laughs> and then sit up. Th- <laughs> well, <laughs> la- so. last year, you were doing that in the third week. Yeah. All right? <laughs> this year, you're going to have to wait a couple months, because right? uh, yeah. I think they're going to compete. I got to wait till it gets warmer, you're too. Wait till it gets a little bit warmer. I'm going dangerous. Dragons, man. We're going drag. Um, <laughs> NBA now. Let's get to it real quick. Uh, it's here. Uh, the Lakers able to win the first game. Ja Morant's out. So, what do you think, real quick? It's so many different narratives going on with basketball. I love a bunch of it. Um, I'm going to say, um, of course, I want LeBron to get another one. But if there's certain teams that I wouldn't mind if they won this year either, man. Okay. Who you, who you like in that matchup? Uh, that's, that's going to be a tough one. And, I, and I, if John Morant comes back, I think they'll still win it. Um, I like everything that the Lakers put together, mm-hmm. but it was towards the end of the season. And I think it's going to be a, uh, it would be better if they were playing together the whole season. But um, they got some players. So, um, and I never got out the Lakers, but I'm going with uh, the Grizzlies. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Okay, he went, Hot take. He went, oh, <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. Uh, Talk about just that match. Just that matchup. Just that, um, oof. I'm going with the Lakers if Anthony sure. Davis can stay healthy. There's mm, there so many go. Lakers fans on social media. And I, they... I'm not a Lakers <laughs> fan, but if Anthony Davis cannot get hurt, no phantom injuries, no real injuries, no, you know, he's, I mean, he's 
can they win yeah. with so what you saying he needs into the series over with he need to be in one of those bubbles like that bubble I kid <laughs> I really would because I mean he, even when he got hurt before John Morant went down now, yeah. he was gone first I think he got back and then John went down and broke his what about the two emerging uh, stars such as like I mean you got Rui Hashimura who yeah. just had a out of body experience and yeah. then we got Austin Rivers uh, uh, AR-15 yeah but that's still they not Anthony I, I'm not an Anthony Davis fan but when he is on he's very hard to stop and LeBron didn't play well how many blocks did he have that game? Seven? Seven? Or so, seven blocks? I'm going with the Lakers, I think. I'm going to go with the Lakers. They, they already beat them, and Morant's not going to be healthy. Yeah. His hand is hurt. Yeah. Like, hurt. Like, yeah. His down, hand is hurt. Right. If they can stay healthy, the Lakers win that way. He's already not a great, great shooter anyway. But Cavs, Knicks. Um, I, I love this matchup, but mm. Cavs, man. Like, I mean, like, Spider mm. Mitchell, man, he's playing, I mean, he's playing without his mind, man. I got to go with the Cavs also. I've been watching the Cavs all year, even though I like the Knicks. Uh, but I'm going with the Cavs on this one. Cavs, no doubt. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I'm going with the Knicks. Oh, Brunson. I'm with the Knicks. Uh, I think um, they won one at home. They're going to win. I think they'll win. A, um, they won one on the road. I think they will win their two games at home. And I just think that the Knicks will win 4-2. Uh, Ouch. Who do you? Who you got coming out the East? I mean, I got to go with Joel, man. Um, uh, Philly, man. Philly coming out the East. I got to go with the Celtics. I'm going to Celtics. Yeah, I'm going with the Celtics, too. I, I like the Celtics. West, in the West, who we got? Uh, can I get a 1A and 1B? Yeah. Uh, it's either going to be the Lakers or Phoenix, man. Oh. <laughs> ah, this is a tough one right here. But it's hard uh, to say in the West. Yeah, it's, it's, I, you could throw any any one of those teams in the hat and pick one out. But I will say Phoenix. I'll go with Phoenix on that one. We'll go with Phoenix. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, that is. I'm healthy. People yeah. Don't, it's just a lot. Um, yeah. And then which team is playing well? The three stars. Man. Yeah. Sacramento playing well. They just beat Golden State twice. Are they gonna beat Golden State real quick? Yeah. 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 Draymond well, Draymond take another game out. Still. I think it. Ah, oh, man. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to come back from that. I w and and the thing is, I like Sacramento. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if they didn't make it to the finals. And they, yeah, they're gonna be Golden State. Golden State is a uh, young team. Is, is I'm rocking with Golden injuries, State. I'm gonna injuries. ride the shooters to the wheels. I'm hard riding to close the out with young team. To the wheels. Yes. Fall off. Um. Okay. Real quickly, AAU season is here. Drew Joyce uh, tournament. Shout out to uh, BNU. They was able to win a championship up there. I Shout out to Ahava Elion. Those were his kids, man. Yes. Yes. That was the sure. original. Crazy. Yes. yes. The original. He, he, yeah, he the did. King. There's a story yeah, behind that as well. The T-shirt Kings. T-shirt Kings. T-shirt Kings. Basketball. Uh, Ohio Kings. For sure. Ohio uh, Kings. Yep. Ohio um, Kings. Then you had the Made Hoops at Spooky Nook. That was big, too. Yeah. Uh, shout out to all Ohio U17. I uh, saw Brady Connor, Jawan State, and Bill Elwards down there. A lot of people down it. All right, we're going to go ahead and give shout out to our teams of the week. Uh, we got four teams of the week. We got Twin Valley South. We got Tecumseh. Um, we have Metaldale. And then we have, last but not least, uh, we got to give a shout out to the UD Flyers, man. They won the battle. UD versus Wright State. Shout out to the sure. UD Flyers. We'll try to get them on next week. All right, with that being said, it's been an honor and a pleasure to have Tamika. You got anything for us? Thank you. Um, I always make fun of Mr. Cash here, but I remember when it was a cell phone and a voice. Mm. And I admire his hustle. So I know I make him uncomfortable when I say that, but it's really out of admiration um, and out of um, um, appreciation for someone who wants to cover our city. You started in the city and then it went state, it went regional and state, and now you cover everything. And I remember when it was a phone and a man. So to see where you are now and the way you stay with it, because most people give up um, when they don't have it right away, um, is um, something that people should admire. Much respect, much love. Tamika Williams, the GOAT. You heard it right there. Appreciate it. And we're going to be following you love. big time this year. <laughs> Peanut, man. Shout out to my team of the week, man. Official network and chill, man. Where the network is built, the network is real, man. Shout out to my brother, uh, Telefero Sebastian, one of the greatest artists in the city. He has one of the greatest art galleries in the world. Art has no rules right there in Dayton, Ohio, um, on East 2nd Street. Uh, we also have my brother, C Lock, man. Shout out to uh, my man, Shiny Mac, man. Um, the, the regional vice president of the biggest insurance company in the world, man. We are literally the best team in the world. So I hope you bring my team back so we can talk about some things we got going on as well. Mr. Smith. 
I'm, I'm gonna shout out anybody that's doing something in the city. Tamika, Peanut, appreciate you guys. And then uh, to the students, Dayton Public Schools, I want to give you guys a shout out. Hang in there, it's gonna get better. Lolly is back for another year. Ah! Oh, there it is. Uh, with that, with that being said, we're we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Day 24/7 now, sports podcast. We catch you at the next one, all right? Shout out to Big Bro. Yeah. Bro.